All right, kids. We have a lot more goat field material coming in, but we're gonna we're gonna start with this batch here. Okay, we won't get a weight on this. Now, I mean, this is why you don't use you don't buy. I ain't buying no more pens. No more gold filled ink pens. Look at all this material. Half, half of the gram weight of those pens is this material, the inyards of the pen. <laughs> that is not gold filled by any means. And I'm very suspicious that certain parts of the uh, uh, gold filled ink pen is actually gold filled and not plated. I'm thinking only the the back cap that's buried down in this trash somewhere is actually gold filled so I think we're going to get burned on that I bought three of those I got another one on the way and I have a a good probably another hundred grams coming all right we got the last little bit of gold filled material in these uh, knives and money clips pretty good deal but I'm curious if I got burned on the weight. Not hard at all to take it apart. Alright, well, this is our batch. So I'm going to finish processing this and cleaning this, peeling this off the knife, knives, excuse me. Get it in the uh, burn bowl here. And uh, we're going to burn the people off of it. So, so I want to finish processing these. Get all this gold filled material peeled off. It tested out, you know, some of these shiny ones. It just says gold filled. It doesn't say 10 carat or 12 carat or whatever or a fraction thereof. It just says GF gold filled. Ooh, I was I was real skeptical. Uh, these two items here, very shiny, look very gold plated. Yeah. All right, we're gonna change tact here a little bit. I do not want to put this in nitric acid. I'm trying to every way in the world to avoid putting these gold filled items in the nitric acid. I think you can do it a different way. When you pour man's nitric acid, uh, you know, some uh, potassium nitrate and sulfuric acid, uh, you know, mixture, it's cheap. Okay, not as expensive as nitric. Who knows what happened there? I did the same thing, just take longer. But we got a sample here of a few grams of gold filled material. Cut it up nice so the surface area is increased. We're putting this, yes, yes, you can guess it. We're putting this in vinegar and sea salt. Yes, sir, we are. We don't care if this takes a month. Okay, if you're trying to recover this stuff quick and you're doing this as part of your. You know, if it's a hobby or if it's a little bit of a business for covering, uh, you know, your goat items, and that's what you do, then, you know, yeah, use nitric acid because you're probably turning a profit. Who cares? You're not going to turn a profit on goat-filled items. I probably have just as much in this as what it's worth. So, in the spirit of the hobby, we're going to put this in vinegar and sea salt. And we're going to see if we can dissolve the base metals out of this as much as we can we might be able to do a two-fold thing we might be able to put this in vinegar and sea salt for a couple of days a couple three days and then remove these items and then put it into a poor man's nitric acid or nitric acid and not use near as much nitric all right we're going to get a an initial weight on this it's not much it's 13.28 grams of gold filled material it's all been tested it's all legit. So we're going to put this in the vinegar and sea salt. All right. 400 milliliters of just regular store-bought distilled white vinegar. And roughly 50 grams, because I didn't weigh it. Well, I don't know what that is. Uh, I don't have my glasses. About a quarter of a cup of non-iodized uh, sea salt. That's it. And you gotta get the stuff mixed up to where it's crystal clear. Don't wanna leave any clumps like we did in our first video. We added too much salt. And I don't know, but we may have made the same mistake twice. But we're going with it. There's our sample size. A little over 13 grams. 
of Goldfield material. And we're going to see if this is possible. So we'll, we'll be back once we get it on the heat and in the solution. All right, I had a devil. I put too much sea salt in it because I eyeballed it. That's not science. So I had to add another 100 ml of regular store-bought white vinegar. Brought it up to 500 milliliters of vinegar and probably 60 to 65 grams because I eyeballed it of sea salt, non-iodized sea salt. We're going to not boil this, but we're going to put it on the, in, the, in the crock pot and sand and heat it up, but we're not going to boil it so that I'm not getting out my stir plate using the stir bar. We're just going to use what we got. We're only going to add probably 300 milliliters to begin with. We'll have another 200 for a booster or to replace the solution with, set aside. We ain't going to add all 500. There's no sense in it. That's a waste. But we wanted the ratio. And I didn't feel like doing the math because I'm lazy. Let's make a smaller batch. So, that's what we're going to do. We're going to add it to this beaker and get this rolling and start putting the, uh, the hydrogen peroxide 3%, regular store-bought. We'll start off probably with 50 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide. The idea is to keep it uh, oxidized. And this is looking this is looking pretty clear. I think we're about ready. And we're going to rock and roll here in a second. All right. We have it spinning, spinning around, around, or just agitating, or bubbling, or whatever. We're going to put 40 milliliters of just store-bought hydrogen peroxide in, in just a second. And then uh, we wait. That's it. We'll come back from time to time and check it. I hope to see the solution turning green, bluish green, fairly quickly, I hope. That means that we're dissolving the base metals out. And it is working, but we have to wait and see if that happens. Uh, I don't think we're going to be dealing with any silver, but I'm going to use distilled water from here on out. There is no water in this, so anything I wash, I want to use distilled water just in case there's some silver in this Gofield from uh, Gofield materials. I doubt it, but we're going to take the precaution to do it anyway. All right, we're going to add the, the hydrogen peroxide. And uh, we'll come back and check it. Probably in about an hour. I just had to show you this one. Should have used a bigger beaker. I forgot how much of a bloody mess we made working with this stuff. It does make a mess. It's going to make a mess. There's nothing we can do about it. Uh, like what I'm seeing. I don't know if you can catch it on this camera that I do desperately need to upgrade. But it's turning. It's turning blue, green. All right, it's already eating the base metals up. It's been 15 minutes. So, that's encouraging. We'll see how far this goes. That little, I put some, some litharge on top of this. And some more lead, so it's holding that cap down. And I'm not getting that nasty crap all over the place. All right, we're just gonna keep checking it. I'll be all night. All right, we do have base metals going in solution. Get ready to run out of time on this card, so we're gonna download these tomorrow morning. This is getting saturated with filter paper, but uh, we're not worry about it. That is great. Hey, we're happy. You can see the, the pieces down there. Well, obviously they're still intact. But we're gonna let the we're gonna let this go for a couple more hours. We're gonna turn the heat off, keep the bubbler going all night. Alright. You see the copper acetate crystals forming on that filter paper. That's groovy. All right, we're going to change the solution out, and we're going to examine the pieces, see if we get any semblance of separation, which I highly doubt, of the gold foils on this gold fuel material. We'll clean everything up. Restart it. Uh, we got a gold foil floating right in there. One little bitty solitary gold foil. Yeah. We have gold foil separation. Look at that. 
lots of gold for separation. Okay. I'm shocked. I don't know if you can see that. Yes, you can. Look at all those gold foils coming off this gold filled material in less than 12 hours. Less than 12 hours. Way less than 12 hours. Look at all those gold foils separated just with vinegar and sea salt. Now tell me if that ain't badass. This appears that it is going to work. Now, how long is it going to take? Well, we'll see. But the idea plan is right now, I'm going to let this go for 48 hours, 24 to 48. Take it off the, out of the solution and uh, throw some hydrochloric, or excuse me, some nitric acid and some water, dilute nitric acid. And uh, see if, you know, because the foils will be loosened, you know, because of this solution, see how fast the nitric just strips everything off. Maybe not dissolves everything, but just enough to release the foils and use very little nitric acid to achieve the goal of recovering the foils off this gold filled material. That's the idea. We're going to see if we can pull it off. We'll be back. All right. I think we've about spent this stuff, so we're going to kill the, the air there. And let's take off the lethargic and lead oxide and lead. That's right. Yeah, let's, we're going to examine this. Let me get this off and cleaned up. We're going to take a look and see uh, how many hours in are we? Uh, 18 hours in. So we're 18 hours in on this. We want to see how much gold full separation from the gold fill material we have. So we'll be back. Okay. We got a bunch of hash and trash in here. But we also have a nice little sample of gold full oils. 18 hours, and it's starting to separate. If you can tell around the edges. Where I chop these up, we're starting to peel back the gold foils. Warm, store bought vinegar, and non iodized sea salt. They're starting to separate the gold foils from these gold, this gold filled material. That, that I did not expect. Alright, we got this. Come on, one of those days. Alright, we have the gold foils and some new juice. We added 35 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide. Remember the ratio, that seems to work really well. 400 milliliters of white vinegar, store bought, I think 3%. And 50 grams non iodized sea salt. Not the chunky kosher stuff, but the fine stuff. That seems to work out best. And we're going to leave this on the uh, on cook, I don't know, maybe another 24 hours. I'm already seeing, well, I guess it was just some loose stuff and there's some gold foils floating around. But I'm really encouraged with what we're seeing. So, we'll be back and check the progress. All right, we're still kicking. Look at that. I mean, come on. Come on. Look at those gold foils. We recovered mainly from the edges of the material we have in here. Okay, we got one complete gold foil that peeled off the, I presume, the uh, gold field ink pen I had in there. That's the shape of it. This is 18 hours. This is awesome. All right, it's been 24 hours. So we secured the bubbler, which is nothing but an old nebulizer, which works great. We're going to get all this cleaned off. Go ahead and filter that out. And uh, we're going to see if we can add to this little small gold full collection and see how far along we got. And then uh, maybe do a little rethink and uh, see where we can take it from here. But let's get this in the filter and uh, we'll be back. 
I bet you're looking at that going, hey, that's a fail. You know, that's no good. Hey, this is excellent. For 24 hours, I will take it. Look at that. That's a, that's a total goat foil. Used to be. 24 hours. And there's considerable. That's a foil right there. That's that. A part. Say, look at that. Excellent. That was part of one of those uh, gold pins. And for part two, we got another little trick up our sleeve to get rid of. Well, first we have to identify what the base metal here is. It was very easy for this gold field ink pen to dissolve the base metal, which was copper because that's what this is very good at. It. That's what you're looking at here. It's copper acetate. If you're doing the experiment for the sake of proving how fast you can do it, this is getting already clogged. You know, yes, nitric acid has its advantages because it dissolves so much stuff. We're trying to do this, I guess, we're taking a two-prong attack. First, cheap second safe Nitri nitric acid is anything but safe producing copious amounts of nitrogen dioxide gas that's not my idea of a fun time <laughs> you know i'd rather not do it so here if you got the time and you don't mind doing this for two or three days four days five days if you don't mind it okay if you're trying to get done in a hurry then what's in that little bottle right there is your answer nitric acid we're calling this a success this is great. And for part two, we got a little trick up our sleeve. It involves copper and uh, hydrochloric acid. That's right. 